Welcome back, everybody. Really appreciate you guys watching and subscribing to my channel. If you are new, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. So today, what we're gonna be doing is breaking down catalyst switching SKUs. There's a million different SKUs out there and I get asked all the time, what does this mean? What is an X? What is a U? What is a B? What is a G? What is a Q? Let's talk about all that and bring it together and tell you guys what this stuff actually means. So what I pulled up right here is a uh, Catalyst 9300L series SKU. And we're gonna break this down and I'm gonna go through all these different components here in a second. But essentially, the SKUs are broken up into three parts. So you have the first part, which is the switch series. So that's gonna be um, like a 9300 or a 9200. The second part in purple here is your downlinks. So that's basically, okay, you have 24 or 48 ports on the switch. Those go to your computers, your access points, things like that. What are those capabilities? And then the last portion right here is going to be the uplinks if you buy a fixed uplink switch. How do you know you're getting a fixed uplink switch? Because you're gonna have an L after the switch series at the end here. So this 9300L means, hey, if you want a particular type of uplink, you need to purchase it when you buy the switch. If there's no L here, that means that the uplink port on the way right hand side of the switch is gonna be blank. And you go ahead after the fact and you buy a network module that slides in there. There's a bunch of different differences as well as far as 9300 or 9200 versus an L series. Um, backplane capabilities, things like that are also gonna be a little bit different. So that's kind of the, the first part, that green part there of the switch series. That should be hopefully self-explanatory for everybody because if you're looking for a 92 or 93, uh, you should be able to read that part pretty easy. Where it gets confusing is the downlink portion. So if we go over to this here, the first two are basically gonna dictate, is this a 24 port switch or a 48 port switch? So in this example here in the 48, or in this purple portion here, it's a 48 UXG. And let's break down the rest of these numbers here too. So the first part is, is it a 24 port or a 48 port? Next is if a letter T. Well, let's take a look what the letter T means. So you can see this switch here, this is a 9200 24 port. T basically meaning that this is going to be a copper one gigabit switch only, no PoE, no M gig, nothing fancy. If you have a P there, again, an example skew here is a 9200-24P. This means it's going to be PoE plus, full PoE plus, 30 watts of power per port. If you have a L following the P, that means that it's going to be partial PoE. So you need to figure out what power supplies are in there, what your power budget's going to be. Not every port is gonna be able to do full PoE if it's a 48 port switch. U basically means that it's a UPoE switch. So you can take a look at this one here, 48 ports. Uh, it's a U and XM, we'll get to those letters in a second here, but this is a UPoE switch. And then we're going to get into some of this M gig stuff. And X basically stands for M gig up to 10 gigabits per second. And this is up to 10 gigabits per second on Cat5, Cat6 cabling. Cat6, you're going to be able to run the full distance here. Cat5, there's going to be distance limitations in order to get these, these faster speeds like this here. But you can see that if it's got an X, that means that the M gig, those downlink uh, ports going to your switches or going to your computers or access points are capable of doing up to 10 gigs. So in this example here, it's a 24 port UPoE switch that can do M gig on the downlinks to up to 10 gig. Next is going to be a G. So if you see a UXG, it means that it's UPoE. It can do 10 gig on the downlinks, copper, but it's only partial 10 gig on the downlinks. Uh, the rest of the ports are gonna be one gigabit. You're gonna have to look at the, de the description of the switch to see, okay, is this a eight port uh, M gig switch, a 12 port M gig switch, a 24 port M gig switch to figure out what that breakdown is. But if it's a G, just know that it's not full M gig 
10 gigabits per second on the downlinks on every single port. It's only going to be a subset of those ports. Next, we'll go through M and what the M means is it's M gig, but only up to 2.5 gigabits per second on those downlink ports. So you can take a look here at this example SKU. It's a 48 port UPOE. We're going to have some ports that are 10 gig. And then we're also going to have some ports that are M gig up to 2.5 gigabits per second. If we look at N, N basically means that it's M gig up to five gigabits per second. So again, in our example here, 9,348 U, UPOE, N, all the ports are gonna be able, be able to do up to five gigabits per second. And then we go over to H, which is UPOE plus. This is kind of a newer one here. Um, if, if you've been reading Cisco SKUs for a long time, you may not know what the H meant. Uh, but this is UPOE plus. So now we're talking about 90 watts of power per port. So you can use that for some of these newer access points that are out there that maybe need a ton of power. Uh, you can use it for, I've even heard of desks now that can raise themselves based off of a PoE port that's being plugged into the back of them. You can use them for LCD monitors. There's a ton of use cases for this UPOE plus stuff that's out there now. S. We can take a look at this SKU here, 48S. This is basically one gig SFP port. So there's gonna be 48 SFP ports on here that are capable of doing one gigabit per second. So you need to slide in an SFP module in every one of those ports for what you wanna do with it. Could be a copper SFP, could be a fiber SFP. Y, 24Y, it's a 24 port SFP, but these SFPs can do 10 gig. So you can slide in a one gig SFP, a 10 gig SFP, uh, copper, fiber, whatever you guys want. That's what the Y stands for. And then the last one here is B. Um, so 48 port UPOE and B, basically these are, we'll call them higher scale switches. So 9200, 9300, you're gonna get a little bit more uh, features out of these. You're gonna get maybe a little bit deeper buffers on the switch. You're gonna be able to do more routes on the switch, bigger MAC address tables on the switches. So if you need that, um, you wanna go with the B series switch. Uh, I, I would say kind of an oddball switch where I typically and looking at customers, um, don't see too many customers that need that type of stuff, but it is there if you need it. If you need those additional features, go make sure you get that switch with the letter B at the end of it. And then just the, you know, the full portfolio here with all the letters that are there. Then if we move over to the uplink portion here, um, we can again see number one, there needs to be an L in the front so we can specify which uplinks we want when we purchase the switch. So this one right here, we'll start out with the 4G. What basically that means is it's four ports of SFP, and those are gonna be one gig SFP. So you need, again, buy SFP modules, slide them in, copper or fiber. 2Y means two 25 gig SFP ports. Those are 25 gig. Go to the compatibility matrix for the transceivers, see what, what SFPs fit in there, but you should be able to do one gig, 10 gig, 25 gig copper fiber in those two Y slots. Next one on the list is gonna be the 2Q variation here. And that is going to be two ports of 40 gig Q SFP. So it's not an SFP where an SFP is kind of a squarish port. These are gonna be Q SFPs, gonna be a little more rectangular. Um, and those are going to be for your 40 gig optics if you need them on the uplinks. And then the last one on this list here is the 4X. Again, X, if you remember back to the other chart we went over, means 10 gig. So these can be either 1 gig or 10 gig SFP. Uh, again, go to your transceiver compatibility matrix, figure out what, what SFPs will work in there. But you should be able to do the majority of the copper and fiber SFPs directly in there. So again, just a clean screenshot for you guys if you wanna copy and paste this thing over somewhere so now you know what everything means. But that's it. Hopefully we cleared up some confusion on what these part numbers actually mean for everybody. And if you guys have any questions, as always, post something in the comments and I will make sure to get back to you. 
Pre really appreciate you guys watching. And again, go ahead and click that like button if you like today's video. Thanks a lot.